Hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and welcome to our latest vodcast. And this is going to be a one part on artificial intelligence. Where do we stand today? Now, at our course in Nashville a couple of weeks ago, I gave a more extended talk, which I'll do later on uh, this year on AI. But when I when I gave that talk, I spoke a lot about the things that are going on in AI, uh, things that are being published literally, which seems on a daily basis, and how things are moving very quickly. But, you know, there is a big difference between things that are articles that are published and things that are FDA approved. That's a major difference. Not that there's anything wrong with articles showing what you've done, but of course, once you've done something, you then need to make it into a product, and that's where FDA comes in. So I thought I would look at where we stand today in 2019 and what strategies I notice happening. Now, there's been a lot of things written. So, for example, this article here talks about a algorithm for detecting pulmonary nodules on chest X-ray and comparing its performance with uh, thoracic radiologists. And you can see the conclusion, the deep learning-based algorithm outperformed physicians in radiograph classification and nodule detection for malignant pulmonary nodules on chest radiographs. And for experienced readers, it improved their capability as a second reader. And this article goes on, the summary of this article in radiology talks about uh, enhancing physician performance. And so one of the big things we know with AI and as people worry about being replaced, in the short term, you're not going to be replaced. It's only going to make you better. And so the implications for patient care from that article are, hey, you know, deep learning based automatic detection algorithm, excellent for detection per radiograph and per nodule basis. Uh, automatic detection algorithm demonstrated higher performance than the thoracic radiologist grouped. And finally, when accompanied by deep learning based automatic detection algorithms, all physicians improved their nodule detection. Now, this is great, but if you said, okay, where is it? I'm ready to roll. Put it in my practice. I'm buying it this weekend and I'm using it on a Monday. I'm going to tell you you're out of luck. This was a project, this was a study. Now, if it's going to see the light of day, someone's going to have to take that. Put it and make it into a product. Make it easier to use. Make it part of a pack system. Make it work so that you can use it in practice. Then go to the FDA, have the FDA approve it, and then you can start selling it. So you could see that although this article had terrific results, it's going to be a while till it sees the light of day. So I thought is, what should we look at for the light of day? And those are things that are FDA approved. So I went back and looked at what's FDA approved. And in fact, while I was at our course, which was beginning on a Friday, it was Friday, Saturday, Sunday, May 17, 18, 19, on the 14th and the 15th and the 16th, things were FDA approved. So I put them in there because I put them in my talk. And then I realized it would be a great talk talking about what's happening. So let me look at radiographs. This was an article. We found that our model achieves performance comparable to that of radiologists. Now, in this case, they were looking at detecting bony abnormalities in the wrist. They were great at the wrist, but they were not as good in the elbow, forearm, or other areas. And that was a task for future research. But they did go to the FDA, and what they did is, which is very important, is going with a very limited scope. So what's a limited scope mean? A limited scope means you only go for a certain part. So what they did is they went after um, wrist fractures and they use it for triage and they compared it to uh, orthopedic people or just regular doctors in the ER setting. So what I'm looking at and what I'm seeing is when you're getting FDA approval, you're not saying all fractures, you're saying wrist fractures. You're often not saying it's for use, but it's for triage. Look for brain hemorrhage, look for a fracture, look for pneumothorax, look for PE, and then move it up on the list. And what you're seeing also is these are startup companies. You're not seeing the G's and the Siemens. You're seeing startup companies that are one-trick ponies at the start. Now, this was an article from Eric Topol. He showed many of the things that are FDA approved. This was going back to January. And you could see things like artists for MR and diabetic retinopathy. So this is more than just radiology, but there's calcium scoring from Zebra, ADOC with 
brain bleed diagnosis. So let's look a little, a little more carefully. Okay, what about, um, what are we seeing, okay? Again, saying an algorithm can spot pneumonia better than a radiologist is great, but how do we put it into place? Maybe that's 2025, but what's here today? Okay, the thing I mentioned about wrist fractures, here's the approval. It's called OsteoDetect, and here's the FDA statement. OsteoDetect is a computer-aided detection and diagnostic software that uses artificial intelligence algorithm to analyze two-dimensional x-rays for signs of a distal radius fracture, a common type of wrist fracture. The software marks the location of the fracture on the image to aid the provider in detection and diagnosis. Okay, you see, it's only the wrist and it's suggesting where the fracture is. Okay. And then look at the indications. OsteoDetect is intended to be used by clinicians in various settings, including primary care, emergency medicine, urgent care, and specialty care, such as orthopedics. It is an adjunct tool. Watch the word adjunct. And is not intended to replace the clinician's review of the radiograph or his or her clinical judgment, which means you bet to get a radiologist. But it's something, and it's a start. Okay, what else? Briefcase. It's a radiologic computer-aided triage and notification software for use in the analysis of non-enhanced head CTs. The device is intended to assist hospital networks and train radiologists in workflow triage, looking for hemorrhage. So what it does is if you're like a company or a busy hospital where you have a lot of films that they can take you an hour to get to, the computer program looks and says, aha, there's hemorrhage on the brain at CT, then moves it to the front of the list. Well, what's the worst thing that could possibly happen? It's wrong, but you're going to read it anyway. On the other hand, if it's positive, you might read it 35 or 40 minutes before you would have read it before. And for, for the patient, that can prove very critical. And look at the conclusion. The results of briefcase are intended to be used in conjunction with other patient information and based on professional judgment to assist with triage, prioritization of medical images. Notified clinicians are responsible for viewing full images per the standard of care. So even if the briefcase is wrong, it's simply meant to make you go faster. Okay, that becomes very, very important. Now, again, you could see the difference in triaging of things. Remember I mentioned this a moment ago talking about wrist fractures alone? Well, here was an article by Lindsay, and this was from Special Surgery New York where they looked at all fractures. They looked at 135,000 radiographs of various body parts. They looked at a lot of different areas from head to toe. And they developed very specific algorithms. And when you look at their conclusions, we observed in this study that deep learning methods are a mechanism by which senior medical specialists can deliver their expertise to generalists on the front lines of medicine, thereby providing substantial improvements to patient care. So you see here they were saying it's not just better than a plain internist, it's better than a specialist. And they were saying it's as good or better than them, and they're senior subspecialized experts in musculoskeletal imaging. So now you can see the change from looking at a wrist being a bit better than a non-radiologist to looking at everything from head to toe being as good or better than an expert radiologist. Now this is not yet available. This is not yet having FDA approval and they, they've formed a company. You can see that on the article and I'm sure they're gonna to try to make it into a product. But again, you could see the difference between what's available and what's coming. Now I mentioned before a moment ago about ADOC, okay, the acute hemorrhage. Again, I like this idea because it's a simple, fast win-win. If AI can pick up something that makes you read the study earlier, and if it's wrong, so what? That's wonderful. So triage is very critical. And again, you could see the last sentence here. The device does not alter the original medical image and is not intended to be used as a diagnostic device. It's simply triage, okay? Again, triage becomes important. And again, going back now to chest, there was this article, Deep Learning Methods for Major Thoracic Diseases on Chest Radiographs, and you could read this article in JAMA. The algorithm consistently outperformed physicians, including thoracic radiologists, in discrimination of chest radiographs with major thoracic disease. Now, 
you also know, and I don't have the slide here because it just happened yesterday, that there was an article published from Google and from Northwestern and NYU making the point that they looked at the National Lung Cancer Screening Study, NLST, and were able to develop an algorithm which was better at detecting the presence of cancer than any way to date. Now again, is that available? The answer is no. But there is stuff available in the chest. While I was away, the FDA approved an AI-based pneumothorax alert. And again, the same thing. Zebra has an alert that allows you to know, hey, there's a pneumothorax, we think. Go look at those images, okay? That's a very nice thing, right? Because, again, if you're wrong, so what? But if you're a place where the images wait to the morning or it may, may, may wait hours for someone to read them, you want those pneumothoraxes to be called right away. And then, a day later, the FDA approves an AI solution for the suggesting PEs. Again, the word triage is very big. And you can see for flagging pulmonary embolism. This is from AI Doc. But again, if you have a program and it could find pneumothoraces or find PEs, you can imagine that's going to be very helpful. But you can see the companies are getting very narrow indications. Triage, suggesting, you're not seeing the terms diagnosing. Diagnosing. You're not seeing where it's saying replace the radiologist. It's showing that it can be helpful. Now, things are going to change. When you're a company, you want more money. You need to be able to uh, get funding. You need to show FDA approval on things. And so you go for very sh narrow uh, windows. But again, it's a start. So where do I think things are going short term? I think you're going to see more targeted apps. Again, pneumothorax we showed you, PE, wrist fracture. You're going to see a lot of things that are pretty good at one thing, looking for a cranial hemorrhage. FDA will do its job. It's going to be slow and steady. It is approving things. Hopefully things will remain the way they were under Gottlieb. That's what we can hope for. I think you will see the bigger vendors coming out with apps, though to date it's mainly the small players that hope to get swallowed by the big players. And many apps or things that are published, including us, 99% accuracy for detecting pancreatic cancer in the pancreas. Okay, but is that a product? The answer is no. Has that been tested on 100,000 cases? The answer is no. But we're going to do it, and perhaps it will be available for you. That's what we're committed to Lust Garden to do. So it's going to take a while. That translation from research labs to clinical use is not a non-perilous journey, but it's a journey that must be traveled. It's a journey that we all will travel, and I think it's very exciting. So you need to be paying attention, and we'll keep you up to date. If you go to CTSS, the front page, there's a section on AI. We're publishing the things that are getting accepted. We have news. We have things coming from other journals, including non-medical journals. We have definitions. We have videos. We have pearls. We have text, and we have this lecture. And with that, I'll stop there, and thank you very much for your attention. Have a great day. If you liked what you heard here today, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and visit our website, ctsus.com, for lectures, quizzes, pearls, and more. Also, be sure to check out our apps that are available for free on the Apple Store. All links are in the description box below.